ました。What is good? Monopod. <laughs> That's right. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're not watching on YouTube, come on over to YouTube, hook a brother up. But your boy's riding solo today. Jay Wayne, Monopod, in the house. I do have Brad. I do have Brad Keselowski sitting next to me. Not the Brad Keselowski. It's a cardboard cutout. For the real OGs of the show, you'll understand. The deep, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, sentimental value that this guy has over here. How are you doing, Brad? All righty then. I'll get to treat Brad like Big Co. In case he treat me on the show, I just ignore him, keep him silent. Brad, you got to speak into the mic. Ah, you just you just sit there and look pretty. All right, man. Solo today. I get to do and say whatever I want. Uh, but I need to ask you guys something. I need to ask a favor. Uh, if you guys could go over to the tubes and hit me with that subby, I need to make it look like this show wasn't a total bomb as I'm riding solo. But I'm going to try and do you guys a favor and cut through this thing real fast. What was that, Brad? Oh, I sh I, it's time to thrive. I, I, you're right. You're right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a, a sweet little sponsorship set up with Thrive Fantasy. Head over to thrivefantasy.com or download the app. And uh, we're talking player props, just uh, all kinds of fun over there. Set your lineup. You're, you're, you're betting on props, the, the biggest names in the industry. It's a super simple app to use. They've awarded millions of dollars in prize money, uh, contests galore. And if uh, you use the, the uh, promo code, the FFD, all caps, they'll match your deposit up to $100. So go check that out. Tell them your boys, tell them your boys that the FFD sent you. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun on Sundays. Shall we go ahead and get into the show? Let's talk these rookies. Oh my gosh, rookies. They're the best ever. Gotta keep up to date with the rookies. And we're gonna do just that. So, let's highlight the highlights. Javante Williams, quiet little week. Seven rushes, 48 yards. Uh, three for three in the receiving game for another level, another 11 yards. So nothing to write home about, but the point is, if there's an owner who hasn't been paying attention to the way Javante Williams looks running the ball on the field, then you need to try and pounce uh, because I, I guarantee you they probably don't respect Melvin Gordon, and that's Susan Javante's way right now. But Javante looks spectacular, and his time will come, and I don't know if it'll be this year or not, but he does have some standalone value, and he'd be an amazing you know, player if something were to happen to Melvin Gordon. So I think maybe go fish for a little Javante Williams, see if he can get a slight discount based on what his initial ADP was. Getting a little dry. Let's get this thing cracking. Yeah. Fresh pop from my friends down at the Revelry Brewing Company. My favorite uh, beer they make is this Bavarian wheat style called the Hotel Rendezvous for the lovers out there. Man, I have a lot of time to drink when I'm not doing this by myself. So what a bummer. I should have loaded up before the show. All right, let's move along. More rookies. Najee. Harris. And there's no secret about Najee Harris. He's crushing it out there. 15 rushes for 62 yards. Six of seven receptions for 29 yards. Not the best day. I mean, the Steelers suck, but he still came through for you in fantasy. He's an every week starter. He's leading all running backs in snaps. All running backs. And he's third in the NFL in yak with 226 yards as a, as a running back. So... As a rookie running back, killing it in the receiving game. You love to see that. I don't know where the Steelers are going long term. I do believe in that organization. Ben doesn't look like he's going to elevate that thing past anywhere it's going. But Najee has a steady floor, maybe not the ceiling. But you're liking what you see from Najee. I mean, he's just he looks the part and he looks everything like he thought he would. Moving along, Terrace Marshall wanted to name drop him just because he's been no-showing. Uh, one for three. 
this past week for two yards. He's 11 for 17 through the air for 93 yards through four games this year. That's nothing. He was crushing it in the preseason. If you had a late rookie draft, he was elevated up there damn near 1-6 range, 1-7, 1-8. I saw him go all those spots in rookie drafts. Uh, we have a couple home leagues that start late, which that's a marvelous way to play a rookie draft is to, to wait. If you can just wait, just have a little patience. Nobody has any patience. They certainly don't have it in Dynasty. And if uh, if someone's getting impatient with Terrence Marshall, you need to go pick that man up because the talent level's there. That wide receiver tree is going to shake out uh, in, in, the, in the coming years. Obviously, DJ Moore's balling out, and Robbie Anderson had a little bring c- come back from the dead this week. But Terrence Marshall, the talent is there. I love that system and the offense, and I think Carolina's set up for success moving forward, and he... He is the he's he's part of that future. I don't I would assume they're probably going to bring bring back DJ Moore because he's doing exactly what they want. But Terrace Marshall has shown us nothing in the regular season, and uh, and you need to go be pouncing on that guy if you can find an impatient owner. Amon Ra St. Brown. Finally, we get some Amon Ra production. Six of eight through the air for seventy yards. Was making some big plays for the Lions. And uh, it was good to see him flash, and they need they need him to come through for them. And it was just finally good to see him because he was a, he was a favorite of ours to take in in the later rounds of rookie drafts, and and we were you know even though he was a fifth round NFL pick, he was still worthy of your of of, of a decent pick in a rookie draft, and and we liked what we saw from him, and we were pushing him, so it was it was good to see him come out with some good production. Uh, let's see. Shout out to Jack Zach Wilson in the Jets. They get their first win. He goes 21 for 34, 297 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. They beat the Titans. Uh, that was a pretty pretty fun game to watch. And, uh, and and shout out to Zach and the connection he's made with Corey Davis. And uh, Crowder came out of nowhere, just not out of nowhere. I mean, but finally makes his debut and he's getting targeted out the yin yang. Uh, so so. So things are looking up for Zach Wilson finally after a rocky, rocky start to the season. Uh, another another Jet, another rookie Jet, Michael Carter. Nothing crazy. Uh, did have a decent week. 13 rushes for 38 yards. Caught, uh, rushed for a touchdown. Caught one of three targets uh, for minus four yards. But the thing here is the snaps, okay? Uh, Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson had seven rushes combined. Um, Ty Johnson played 20 snaps. Tevin Coleman played 11. Michael Carter played 31 snaps. So we just Michael Carter's now the number one dude there. He he's at he's at the top of that rotation. It is a rotation, okay? That's that tree comes from the Shanahan lineage. So they like to they like a stable. Uh, but if you can get the guy who's at the top of the stable. That's where the value is, and that's where it's going to pay off. And Michael Carter looks like he's worked his way from being third on the jet chart, moving his way up second, and now with the snaps, he had more snaps than both the other guys, and he had more rushes than both the other guys combined. So that, that to me, is telling me he's taking over. Not looking super great like to start Michael Carter. I don't think I want to start him, but I'm loving the, the stock. My, my, I'm loving my, my value and my stock that I have in Michael Carter. Let's see... Kenny G, the real Kenny G. Kenny Galladay has to get pushed aside. Kenneth Gainwell is now the Kenny G. Three rushes for 31 yards and a touchdown. Six for eight through the air. Caught six of eight targets for 58 yards. And he's still only playing around 35% of the snaps. So I think that's something to keep note of. But the Eagles haven't committed to Miles Sanders. They haven't committed to the run game. They've been down, and they haven't run the ball a ton in recent weeks, and that's really hurting Miles My- Sanders on top of all the receiving production that they're throwing Kenneth Gainwell's way. And he looks the part, though. I mean, he, he, I'll Casey said it before. I've said it. I'll say it again. He was keeping Antonio Gibson off the field in Memphis. You got to be a special kind of guy to keep another special guy off the field. Now, maybe they were just fucking around. Obviously, they should have given Antonio Gibson way more than 73 career touches at Memphis because he's an animal and a dog. But Kenny G is also, I mean, he's great. And I'm loving the Kenneth 
Kenny Gainwell stock that I have, and he looks he looks twitchy, and he's catching the ball just like he did in college, and and those that's the PPR floor, and he's damn near flexible or RB toable. I mean, I don't feel great about it, but if you you know it's tough out there, and if you went RB light and you got an injury or two, you might be having to lean on Kenny, and it's not the worst position to be in. Shout out to Kenny G. Shout out to Kyle Pitts, four of nine for fifty yards. He's just steadily, slowly moving along. You know, it's a rookie tight end, so. Just relax, calm down, it'll be okay. We're working our way towards the MVR, all right? The most valuable rookie, but we're not there yet. And I know you're probably thinking this next guy should have been it, but I got to go Trey Lance uh, next. Sorry. He's not the MVR, okay? Trey Lance produced in fantasy, fantasy football. We're talking fantasy. So Trey Lance putting up 20 points in the ha- in a half of a game, is amazing, and that's what's setting this world on fire. Everybody knew that was going to happen, and so they've been screaming for it to come to fruition. The 49ers, though, haven't been. Kyle Shanahan didn't want to play Trey Lance. He's not ready to win them actual football games. Similar to Jalen Hurts crushing fantasy stats, I'm not sure that he's ready to win them football games. Now, he has won a couple games, and and, and I'm not saying that he looks that bad. I, I think I think... Jalen Hurts looks better from a from a NFL quarterback standpoint currently than Trey Lance, but Trey, Trey's just so raw and and you saw it. He was missing throws. There was throws in the dirt. He was forcing things. He wasn't seeing things correctly. He had some. He had he had uh, seven rushes for forty one yards, but a lot of those yards there must have been three or four plays where it was fourth and long, and he took off and got you. Almost to the first down, but he didn't get your first down. But he 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 can only make one read, and he takes off, and that's good for fantasy. But it's not converting them first downs. It's not moving the chains. Yes, he's going to hit some spike, some splash plays, which he did on that busted play to to uh, Debo. That was just a complete bust in coverage. Um, but I don't think Trey Lance is ready to come in and win them games, and that's why they've stuck with Jimmy, and that's why I think they'll probably go back to Jimmy. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. They're already saying that that Jimmy might be able to play this week, and I don't like hearing that because if they do rush him back too soon from an injury, it's just going to compound itself, and then they're going to be forced with Trey Lance, which for fantasy, that's great, and I I do believe in Trey Lance long-term, and I do think he's the future of that organization. Obviously, they gave up everything to get him, but they they have a good team. They have a good team. They have a, a contending team, and they need Jimmy in there to continue to win games, which is all he's done his entire career. And so, but Trey, Trey put up the points, so that's all you're going to hear about. But he's not ready to win them games. I just wanted to touch on that for a second. All right, the next guy, I did I wanted to make him MVR, but there's one more player more deserving. But for the first time this, this year, Kadarius Toney will make his entrance onto this rookie recap, rookie report, whatever you want to call it. He was 6 for 9 for 78 yards. Played 51 snaps, which is a lot of snaps. Galladay led the team with 60. But, man, if you watch that game, and I hope you did. I hope you watch games. I hope you're not one of these guys who thinks they don't have to watch the game. What are you doing playing fantasy football if you don't want to watch the game? But if you watch Kadarius Toney, <clears throat> if you watched Kadarius Toney, it's clear that that dude just moves different than most of the players on the NFL field. Whether you're talking about the get off from the line of scrimmage, the change of direction at the top of a route, or with the ball in his hands. He just moves different. There's a twitch. There's an electricity. There's a burst. And you can't teach that shit. But he can also he he's fluid. You know, he he can he gets open. He creates separation and he's, he's just eating up yak. Of the 92 receiving yards he's had on the season, 74 of them have come after the catch. And just good luck breaking. Like, he broke so many tackles. Good luck tackling that guy. Good luck catching him and getting your hands on him. It's take, it takes the whole team. And he was showing out. And he was making big plays for them, helping them move the ball, helping them move the, move the chain. And, I mean, it was just fantastic showing from Kadarius Toney. The only thing, we've said this before, the only thing that's going to stop Kadarius is Kadarius. Can he keep it together up here? He's got some 
some issues in the past that he's he's worked through and come through on the other side of. But if he can keep his head on straight and keep focused and keep working, and and he's he's tweeted some dumb shit before getting this work. I'm sure he's happy now. These wide receivers, they're not happy if they're not getting the ball. And 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 they got other guys there, and it took a couple injuries for them to basically force him on the field. And then you can see what that athleticism or what that that trait, that talent that he has can do and when put in the right position. And it was just fantastic. And shout out to Saquon Barkley. He's back. He's fully back. He was he he put that team on his shoulders. Like he would they were feeding off that energy. It was like he's not gonna let that team lose. And not every team has a stud like that where you just can feed off of that energy and and you just know that you have a chance because that guy is on your team. And he just took over, and it was incredible. And he's back. He's amazing. And uh, it was just it was really good to see. Shout out to him. All right, enough bibble babble. Enough rambling. It's already 16 minutes, way longer than I planned it to be. How in the world am I talking to myself for that long? On this one segment. I did grow up an only child, so I am used to being alone. Um, you know, talking to made-up friends that, that uh, aren't really here. Uh, so this is a little fun, but let's, all right, let's, let's wrap up and get out of here. The MVR. My man, Devontae Smith. Woo! There's some stuff for you to read. He had seven catches on ten targets for 122 yards this last weekend. Just dominating snaps. He's ninth in snap percentage among wide receivers in the NFL with 90.4%. He's playing the ninth most snaps of every wide receiver in the league as a true frosh, as a rookie, as a 170 pound. You can't play that light. He doesn't look that small. He doesn't look 170 pounds. He looks just fine. You can't stick this guy. It's just like he was doing in college. That's what it looks like when you watch him play on Sunday. He doesn't look small despite the weight. He's fluid. He's smooth. He's getting wide open. He's working the sideline with the toe drops and the and the, the, the toe drags and the dots. I mean, he's just, he's like, or, he's like an, it's like watching a symphony out there. The way he's just so smooth. He sits down in zones. Hurts is locked onto him. I mentioned the 10 targets. He's getting targeted out the wazoo. More than six or more targets on every game this season. Them boys were together at Alabama. All right. And he's he gets open at will. He's just so you can't, you can't, you can't touch him. He's too good. And he's damn near worked his way to every week starter. I mean, he had a he's had a couple down games despite the targets, but you, you like the targets. But Jamar Chase already worked his way into every week starter, and Devontae Smith, through four weeks, has you wanting to put him in that lineup. I don't know if I'm going to do it just yet, but, man, I'm loving what I see. Just love it. So shout-out to Devontae Smith. I think I'm going to go ahead and hit this outro. Appreciate you all for joining me. I'm going to go make a couple more vids for your pleasure. Hit me with that subby, that scribey. Tell Big Co and, J- and Casey that uh, that I, I didn't blow it. And, uh, yeah, just appreciate you guys joining me. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get the FF out of here. Peace.